So I recently watched a video from Rainbow Plant Life where she asked a pretty legitimate question. If I could only cook one dish for a vegan skeptic, dot, dot, dot. That's a question that I get quite often. And it's also a lot of comments that I get from you all saying that you're not even vegan or you're not vegetarian and you're watching my videos to use less meat, which I think is amazing. Now, if there's one thing that I can make vegan and make it to where nobody cares if it's vegan or not, and that is gonna be a vegan chili. So let's get moving. We're gonna make a really easy vegan chili and you're gonna have leftovers for days, which is with chili, that's the best. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a lot going on. We have a lot of ingredients for this chili. It's gonna seem like quite a bit, but realistically for the chili, most of these seasonings are things that you're probably gonna already have in your pantry, very simple pantry ingredients. And then for the meat, we're gonna be doing two things, kind of a trick. We're gonna be using the McCormick bacon bits, uh, the bacon pieces. Uh, these bacon bits are actually vegan. Pretty much, they're just a textured protein. The cool thing is, is once you rehydrate these up, fry them up, they taste like little bacon pork bits that it's just really incredible the, the way this flavor comes out. We're gonna be using this as part of the meat and then we're also gonna be using some textured vegetable protein. I've used textured vegetable protein a ton on this show. It's what we make most of our burgers out of. It's also what is made with most vegan meats. It's what everything's made out of. It's a textured protein. One of textured protein's original uses was in Hormel canned chili um, and people ate that for years, not realizing that one of the main ingredients is a vegan meat, a plant-based meat. First thing that we need to do is hydrate and flavor up our meat. Let's get that rolling. So for a liquid broth for a TVP, you just need about a half of a cup of water. We're gonna do about one tablespoon of a white distilled vinegar, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and a tablespoon of Marmite. And then just give this broth a little mix. Make sure that Marmite is really mixed in there. This is gonna be a very kind of meaty, very umami flavor. And then all we need is one cup of TVP and a quarter cup of the bacon bits. Putting these two together is just going to give us a really nice flavor profile. So now all we wanna do is just dump our broth into the mixture here and then give it a nice stir. Now we just need to make sure that this mixture sits in this broth for about 30 minutes or so, about 15, 20 minutes in, give it a stir to make sure everything that is on the bottom gets stirred up to the top because this stuff's gonna suck up that broth like a sponge. So let's let this sit. We're gonna prep the rest of the ingredients. Let's get moving on the veggies. I have a large Dutch oven on the burner. So first things first, let's add about five tablespoons of olive oil to the Dutch oven and put that on a really low heat. Then let's chop a yellow onion. I'm gonna do a medium yellow onion-ish, medium large. Now just add the whole onion to the Dutch oven. Now I'm gonna do a whole head of garlic. Um, if you want, you could do, you know, five, five or six cloves or so, but I'm gonna do, I want it to be fairly garlicky. Let's add the garlic, stir the onions around. Now at this point, we're gonna add our peppers. You can get really creative with the pepper. I'm just gonna use one red bell pepper and one red jalapeno. I'm making this for some friends tonight uh, for my little 40th birthday get together. Did you all know I'm turning 40? Actually, by the time you see this video, I'm already 40. I turned 40 on Friday. Uh, and I know that a lot of them don't like things very spicy, so we're only gonna be using this one little red pepper. Now for the red bell pepper, I'm just gonna chunk this up because I do want the chunks of pepper. It's one of my favorite things. Let's add the peppers to the pot, let those cook for just a moment. Okay, the peppers and onions look awesome. It's time to add our meat. You could do this in a separate skillet if you want, but I like to cook the meat in like the onion, the oil that's already there, that fattiness, because we really wanna, we wanna keep that fattiness. In a regular chili, there's a lot of fat from the meat and things like that, so we wanna keep that. So let's scoot the onions and peppers over to the side. Let's drop our meat in and kind of brown it for just a moment. We wanna make sure those bacon bits get a nice brown on them really cook this meat up, it's gonna make a difference. So at this point, now that we have a really nice browned meat, there's a lot of brown bits on the bottom of the pot. So essentially what we wanna do is we wanna like scoop up a lot of those brown bits. Those brown bits are like the cooked Marmites and the bits of soy sauce and all of that just has like a ton of flavor that we don't wanna lose. I'm gonna scoop that up with some beer. Now I'm just using, it's a New Belgium fat tire. This is one of my favorite beers. You can use like a light beer or like an amber beer. Uh, this is an amber ale. A lot of people just use cheap beers. I don't really like to do that because it does impart some flavor and I really want the good flavor. 
flavor in it. Okay, so now for our seasonings, uh, really out of all these seasonings, cumin, 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 whatever you wanna call it, cumin is part of the star of this show for this chili. Uh, it really is gonna add a lot of the depth of flavor. We're gonna start with this. We're gonna add about three tablespoons of cumin. Two tablespoons chili powder, one and a half tablespoons brown sugar, two teaspoons dried basil, one teaspoon smoked paprika, one teaspoon salt, half teaspoon dried oregano, half teaspoon ground black pepper, two tablespoons of the mushroom seasoning. Now, if you don't have the mushroom powder, you can leave it out. You can always sub this in for some like just dried mushrooms. That does work, but it's not the same amount of punch as what this stuff is. If you have an Asian market local nearby, swing by the Asian market and ask them for mushroom seasoning or mushroom powder, mushroom extract. They probably have this stuff. It is so so good. I talk about it a lot. I'm telling you, this is a secret weapon for just about any recipe. Let's mix this guy up. It really should start to smell like chili now. Now we really wanna give it that nice like Chipotle-esque type of taste to it. So we're gonna do some liquid smoke. We're gonna do two teaspoons of liquid smoke. Now I'm gonna drop in a whole can of this Chipotle peppers and adobo seasoning. Uh, this is like one of those seven ounce cans. This stuff's awesome. Just gonna dump the whole thing in. And now I have two cans of the Cento tomatoes. I have a can of the peeled tomatoes and a can of the crushed tomatoes. Both of these crushed tomatoes is more like a sauce. The peeled tomatoes is gonna have big chunks of tomato. They're gonna cook down, break apart naturally. It's really gonna give it like the, just an awesome texture. Let's dump both of these in. Now at this point, everything's pretty much put together. At this point, if you want to, you could thicken it up with some tomato paste. You could thin it down with some water. You can, like I said, you can change the meat that's in here. Everything's kind of ready to go. I am gonna add some red kidney beans. I don't wanna add those yet because I hate when the beans get mushy. We're gonna let this cook together for about an hour, hour and a half or so first. The whole thing needs to simmer together for at least two, two and a half hours. Let it go for about an hour. Let's add the kidney beans after the hour. Cover it up, we're gonna cover it up right now and then we'll let it go that full two and a half hours. Add the beans wherever you really want. They just need to warm up. Uh, we're also gonna drain these and rinse them off first. Remember that. This is coming out awesome. I mean, look at this. Meaty and chunky. Mm. Unbelievable. That is incredibly rich, incredibly savory. It has all those qualities that you would love in a meaty chili. Doesn't taste like any vegetarian chili I've ever had. Let me go ahead, I'm gonna pack this up. I'm gonna take it over to my friends for my social distancing 40th birthday party. And we're gonna see if they, the carnivores, all my carnivore friends, enjoy this meaty vegan chili. Is everybody happy? Are you happy, Andy? Are you happy? Does that, I mean, does it look like a good? It's not meat, but you can't really tell it's not meat. It's, it's good. Now oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Andy, you're already done? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> was it good chili, Andy? It was very good chili. Do you think it, did it taste like meat? It did taste like meat. Honestly. The texture is meat too, yeah. Honestly? Honestly.